Supported by a heavy naval barrage, the 7th Division makes its dramatic landing in Borneo, climaxing previous assaults by the 9th at Tarakan and Brunei, 450 miles to the north, the 7th have their eyes on the valuable oil fields of Balikpapan, headquarters of Japanese resistance in the southeast. Today, the 7th have the equipment they so badly lacked in previous campaigns. Ducks and alligators waddle ashore through the choppy surf. The heaviest aerial and naval bombardment of any Southwest Pacific action had driven most of the Japanese inland, but not before they set fire to the oil wells near the coast. A grim curtain of smoke now hangs over the entire battlefield. Tanks land from their barges, units of Australia's one-time armoured division, but their field of movement is very different from the deserts of the Middle East. With the beachhead in our hands, troops move forward to meet the stiffening Japanese resistance inland. Strenuous battles lie ahead, where the enemy holds strongly fortified positions in the hills. The Commander-in-Chief, General Blamey, and General Moore's head confer with General Milford on right, Commander of the 7th. Troops come across an 8th Division truck, lost at Singapore. It's a day of liberation for the native population. Their loyalty can once again be expressed openly, and it is. In the British residence house in Balikpapan, Generals Wootton and Moore's head receive His Highness Sultan Mohammed Jamal al Alam. But the first fruits of victory still had to be gathered. Belching flames threatened the whole oil field. The tops of the wells must be blasted in to extinguish the blaze. Gushers with their control sabotaged must be held in check. Valuable crude oil, pure enough to bunker ships, is going up in smoke. Diggers face nature's fire, as well as enemy fire, in the battle for Balikpapan.